This is Troy Putnam, Pioneer Field Agronomist in Southern Ohio. And I've been getting a number of calls from growers lately as it relates to high temperatures and pollination because much of our corn is right in the middle of pollinating and we've had a number of days. It's been 89, 90, 91, 92 degrees. The good news is, is that in many of these situations we also have adequate soil moisture. So our odds of pollinating are very good even with these higher temperatures. We've seen years where we've had uh, successful pollination following very similar trends in, in days in terms of high temps. Another key point to remember about pollination is that much of the pollen is shed mid-morning to late morning. Say 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock in the morning when the pollen uh, shed is at its highest. And then we might have another flush later in the evening after it cools off, maybe late afternoon, early evening. When temperatures uh, start to come back down, that plant uh, heads into the evening. So at this point, with the soil moisture where we have, even with these high temperatures, the outlook for pollination is very good. As we continue on with pollination, this is a very familiar and welcome sight as we get into the cornfield, and that's tassels. We drive down the road and we get excited when we start to see the tassels emerge from a cornfield. That means things are moving along very well. Interestingly enough about a tassel, there's about a thousand spikelets, give or take, depending on the hybrid. And within those spikelets, that's where the anthers emerge. Those anthers are those things that you get all over you when you scout a cornfield. They get on your shirt, stick to your arms, the back of your neck, on your hat. But you know those anthers are so very important because that's where the pollen comes from. Those millions of pollen grains that we need to pollinate this crop come from those anthers that you see hanging on that tassel. Those anthers, as they come out and shed pollen, will fall off that plant. Uh, the, the pollination process usually begins in about the middle of the main branch of the tassel, goes up and down from there, and then moves to the laterals. So we have a lot of pollen. A tassel can shed pollen for a week or so. And uh, there's, other, there's other tassels around as well doing the same thing. Interestingly enough, when we think about the anthers, they will not shed pollen when they're wet. If they have dew, or they have rain, they will actually shut down until they dry off and then they will go ahead and they will shed pollen just as they were before. There is one other thing that you can do four or five days after pollination has begun. You can return to the field and look for a small ear much like this one. You can pick that ear and if you're very careful and deliberate and you remove that husk and you're careful not to tear or rip the silks from that ear, when you're done, you'll be left with an ear like this one. This is a young ear in the early parts of pollination, and you can do what's called uh, the ear shake test. You actually shake that ear, and you'll notice that some of those silks are starting to come off now, and that's a sign of successful pollination. I'd suggest you return to the field for a couple, three days after that, continuing to do that test, and what you'll find is that most of the silks will be gone from that ear, and you'll realize that you've had a very successful pollination. That concludes this Pioneer Growing Point Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.